This video covers the review 15 for quadratic functions part 2. So the first part asks us to write the function for each of the following. So I can see here this one has not moved, the vertex has not moved left or right, my vertex is at 0, 0, making my axis of symmetry at 0. It is not being reflected. The only other possible thing could be that it is stretched or shrunk. But if I go out 1, 1, 1, 1, my box fits perfectly, so this is not stretched, it is not compressed, it is not reflected, so there is no A value. It is not moved right or left, so there is no H value, and it is not kicked up or down, so there is no K value. This means we just have an X squared by itself. This would be our parent function because there has been no shift in any direction, no change whatsoever. Problem two, this one has changed. My vertex is here at 3 5. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 3. It's not being reflected, but I'm going to check stretch or shrink. So this one is not changing at all in front. So it's not reflected, it's not stretched, it's not shrunk, so there's no a value. My uh, parabola moves to the right. Remember, whatever number you see down here, like we see a positive 3, it is going to be the opposite inside your parentheses, so x minus 3 squared, and then we go up 5. Remember that your vertex is this number and this number, so just this, no minus sign, so the opposite of whatever's inside, and the same as what follows, which is what we have listed there. So problem 3, my vertex is up at 0, 4, and my axis of symmetry is x equals 0. For my equation, I can see that this is being reflected because it goes down, so I need a negative in front. It, my 1, 1, 1, 1 still fits, so there is no stretch or shrink. It does not move left or right, so I do not need parentheses, and it kicks up 4, so I need a positive to go up. 4 because that's how many it shifts up in the back. Problem 4. This one does not move anywhere left, right, up, or down. The only thing it does is reflect, and my 1, 1 fits, so it does not stretch or shrink. So I have a negative, and then x squared. There are no parentheses because it doesn't move left or right. There's nothing in the back because it doesn't move up or down. My domain for all quadratics is all reals. And my range is going to be less than or equal to 0. It starts at 0 and goes down from there. Problem 5, my vertex is at negative 5. 1, 1 fits. And it is not reflected, so I go straight to my parentheses. Inside the parentheses is always the opposite, so we went to negative 5 to get here. So there will be a positive 5 because the parentheses are always the opposite. And then I don't move anywhere up or down, so I don't need anything else in my function. Domain is all reals. This one, my range starts at 0 and goes up, so my range is getting greater than or equal to 0. Problem 6, my vertex moves to the right 4 and up 2. It is reflected, but is not stretched or shrunk. So I need a negative in front to reflect because I move to the right or left. In this case, the right, I need parentheses. The opposite of a positive 4 is a negative, And then I go up 2. So the only thing that's the opposite number is what's inside the parentheses. Domain is still all reals. My range starts at 2 and goes down. So y is less than 2. These, um, they're asking us on 7 through 9 to describe the changes. Plus 1 on the inside means it's going to move to the left 1. Plus 4 in the back means it's going to kick up 4. A negative in front with 8 reflects. The 2 in front stretches or makes it narrow by 2. Inside the parentheses as a negative goes the opposite, so right 4. And then what follows is always the same, so down 8. 9, the 1 half, is going to compress. It's going to make it half as tall. 
Inside as a negative goes the opposite direction, so write 3, and then kick it up in the back. So this one we're going to go up because it's positive 4. Problem 10 asks me if this graph is shifted down 5 units, what could represent that? To go down 5, I need to subtract 5 from the back. Nothing else is going to change. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 11 wants me to do a quadratic parent function, so an x squared, that is compressed by 1 third, shifted up 2, and write 6. So they want me to write this graph, or write this equation. So compressed by 1 third needs a 1 third in front. To go to the right 6, we need parentheses. It's the opposite sign, so we need a minus 6. And then to go up 2, we add 2 to the back. Problem 12 wants me to do something similar, write an equation that is shifted left 3, up 4, and made steeper by a factor of 2. So steepness goes in front. Inside the parentheses is my left or right. It's always the opposite. So since we're going left, it's going to be a plus. And then up 4 goes in the back. And the only thing that's the opposite is left or right. So up or down stays as normal. 13, if we have x squared plus 3, how would it be affected if it shifts to x squared minus 7. So plus 3 is going to be here. Minus 7 is going to be down here. So because there's nothing, because we're talking about the back, there's nothing in parentheses. We're not looking at left or right. If we're starting at 3 and going to negative 7, we're shifting down. So the answer is going to be B. Now something that you can do in your calculator if you're not sure is in Y1 plug in your original, so x squared plus 3. In Y2, this is my change, so x squared minus 7. Remember that if you scroll over here and click enter one time, you can make your second graph bold to see the difference. So this is my original, the bold is my new, and it's shifting down from my original. So we'll do that on 14. In if in I'm sorry, in the graph of the function x squared minus 7, which shift describes the vertex if negative 7 is changed to negative 4. So we had originally x squared minus 7. In y2, we're changing the negative 7 to a negative 4. And they're asking what happens to the vertex. So Thin is my original, bold is my new, my vertex is shifting up, so that's going to be A or B. And it's only going 1, 2, 3 units. Problem 15, how do these graphs relate to each other or how, how do they compare? So in Y1, I'm going to put X plus 8 squared. And in y2, I'm going to put x minus 4 squared. Now again, some of you can do this in your head, and that's totally fine. I'm showing you how you can do most of this on the calculator. So if you happen to forget, the calculator is your best friend. So plus 8 is f of x. So the skinny one is my f of x. The bold is my g of x. So it's shifting to the right. I'm sorry. They're saying, where's f of x in relation to g of x? So f of x is to the left of g of x, so it's not a or b. And then how many units? Well, from here, four units, one, two, three, four would be there. We know it's not four, so it must be 12. 16 says, compared to the parent function, one-fourth x squared plus six is, so remember my parent function is x squared plus so again, you can memorize what these things do or be able to use your calculator. Either way is okay with us as long as you get the right answer. So 1 fourth x squared plus 6. I need to scroll over because I cleared it, so i got to make it bold again. So x squared is up here or down here in the, in the normal. And then my shift is in bold. So I can see this one is fatter, wider, which means compressed because they press down on it to make it fat. And then it shifted up, so that would be answer choice D.
Problem 17 shows me a graph and then says if we translate it down 6, which of these best represents that? So if we go down 6 from my vertex, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is the only change we're making. So I need my new graph to be at negative 5. This one is not at negative 5. This one is not at negative 5. This one is at negative 5. This one is not at negative 5. So all you're looking for is changing that y-intercept, basically. Where does it cross the y-axis? And look for the one that crosses at the correct spot. 18 says that we have functions in the form ax squared, and they want us to do them from widest to narrowest graphs. So before I do that, I'm going to clarify over here. Um, so compress means you have a fraction smaller than 1. 1 half is smaller than 1, 3 is not smaller than 1, 2 is not smaller than 1, 7 and a half, or 7 half, excuse me, is 3.5 as a decimal, which is not smaller than 1. So the things that will stretch is everything bigger than 1. So stretching would be 7 halves, 3, and 2. So they want me to go from widest, so the smallest number, to narrowest, which is the biggest. So my smallest number is 1 half. 2 is smaller than 3, so C would be my correct answer. And then because 7 halves is 3.5, we know 3.5 is bigger than 3, which is why it goes at the back. 19 asks how negative uh, 3x plus 4 compares to the graph of the linear function. So you can graph it by hand. We can also put it into y equals. This time we are talking linear, so we just need an x, not an x squared negative 3x plus 4. And again, I'm going to scroll over and make it bold so I can see the changes. So my skinny one, plain one, is my original, and then bold is my new. So uh, g of x, they're talking about the bold. This one is reflected because it's going in a different direction. If it was not reflected, it would be parallel, but this one is crossing through. g of x is less steep or steeper. We know it's probably only going to be one of these, but not both of these. And by the way, I can go ahead and mark out C because it does not have answer choice 1. G of X has a smaller Y intercept. Well, this one crosses at 4 and not 0. 4 is not smaller than um, 0, so it's nothing that's going to have a 4 in it, which means my answer has to be uh, A. Keep in mind, 3 is bigger than 1, so 3 would be steeper. If you're climbing up this hill versus climbing up this hill, you're going to have a much higher incline, a much steeper slope with a 3 than with the 1. 20 through 24 can be linear or quadratic, so if you prefer quadratic because we've been doing that over and over, you can change these all to x squareds. Um, but they're asking us to say what's happening. So we are going off of the ax minus h plus k model here. So a in front, if it is negative, will reflect. So that would be um, 22 and 24 have negatives in front. Those are going to reflect. A vertical stretch or steeper means a big number in front. So that would be 22. And that's the only one with a big number in front. Less steep is a fraction or decimal smaller than 1, like 20. So B would go with 20. And then to shift left or right, we're talking inside. So plus H goes left, minus H goes right. So plus H would look like 21. Minus H would look like 22 and 24. And then K in the back kicks it up or knocks it down. And these are true to form, so up is positive, down is negative. So um, on 24, we're going to put G because it's a negative, and that's the only one that has something subtracted. 23, we have a plus, and 20, we have a plus at the end, so those are going to shift up or down. Keep in mind that every piece in your equation should represent a change. So we have a number and a number there, are two changes. Here we have one change. Here we have a negative, a number, and a number. So there are three changes. One change. One, two, three changes. So however many changes you have is the same amount of letters that we should have 
or the same amount of transformations that we should be able to recognize. Problem 25, we have this graph and they ask us to um, cut the slope in half and decrease the y-intercept by 7. So first thing I need to do is figure out what the heck are my originals before I go changing them. So my b value, my beginning value is at 2 and then my slope goes up 3 right 1 so my slope is 3. So my slope is going to be halved so 3 divided by 1 half it's being cut in half and we get 3 halves. My y intercept decreases by 7 so 2 minus 7 is negative 5 so all in one equation, we have 3 halves x minus 5. Twenty-six asks for us to compare the uh, quadratic parent function and pick one that has a translation of 3 to the right and a reflection across x. So if you don't know these things by heart, you can plug a, b, c, and d one at a time into y equals and see which one does that. Or you can remember that a reflection needs a negative in front and then to go to the right needs parentheses. So that would be answer choice C. But again, if you're not sure, you can plug it into Y equals and compare. We're going to do that on 27. So I am looking for which function matches that graph. So in Y equals, I only need one at a time. I'm going to plug in what they give me exactly like I see it one equation at a time. Click graph and compare. Whoa, that's definitely not it. The second one does not have a negative and has a plus three and a minus one. So that looks a little bit closer. To double check to see if this one really is right, I'm going to pick a point on the graph like negative two, one and go to my table and see if that point is there. So when x is negative 2, y is 1. Ooh, this is looking like a pretty good option. But let me double check the rest of them. In y equals, answer choice c is this with a plus 2. That's definitely not it. And then... I need to insert a fraction of one half and we're going to subtract three and subtract one. Oh yeah, definitely not right. So again, that's how you can use your calculator if you're not sure which of these is correct and you haven't memorized the different transformations. 28, ask for the vertex. The vertex is always the opposite of the inside, so negative 7 opposite is a positive 7, and the same as what follows, so the same of negative 8 is negative 8. Doing that again on 29, the opposite of a positive 1 is a negative 1, the same of 4 is 4. 30, ask us which function represents the image of y equals x squared after a shift 9 units to the right. So in vertex form, we know that going to the right needs a minus 9 in parentheses. None of my answer choices look like that because they are all in standard form. So this is where I can really use a calculator. In y1, I'm going to type in what I have. In y2, I'm going to type in my answer choices so that I can try to compare them and see which one is correct. I'm going to make sure for y2 that I scroll all the way over to the left and change my second equation to be a uh, bold thing. So when I click graph, I'm looking for the answer choice that gives me a nice clean thin line and a bold line right over it. So it was really fast, but if you watched, it did clear or uh, thin and then bold. So that one's going to be my answer choice. I'll show you what it looks like if it's not your answer choice. So B, we have a, a thin and a bold. C and D, you won't even, well, you could see uh, D. C, you won't even be able to see because it's way up at the top. D, we can obviously see that one is not true. So I'm going to show you A one more time so you know what you're looking for. and watch it really close. Are you ready? It's going to be over here. We're going to see thin, bold, right on top. Thin, bold. 
da. So that's my answer. 31, we're going to do the same thing. They tell us to reflect, shift down one, and left three. So reflect needs a negative in front. Left three is a plus three in parentheses. Down one needs a minus one. So in Y1, I'm going to put a negative X plus three squared minus one. So I'm putting it in vertex form. In Y2, I'm going to plug in my answer choices and see which of these does a um, thin and then bold right on top of it. That's not it. And remember, in order to get the bold in Y2, you have to scroll over to the left all the way until this cursor over here is blinking and click enter for it to be bolded. If you retype, if you like completely clear out and retype something, it will start all over and it will not be bold even if you just had it bold. So make sure that you're watching out for that. So this is my thin and my bold is not directly on top. So we're down to option C. Minus 10. Oh, there it was, thin and bold. And if I try D, I don't even, well, yeah, we're not going to be able to see it because it'll be off the graph, but it did not overlay the thin. So C is my correct answer. 32, it's just an old problem. They want us to solve for Y and graph. To solve for Y, we move X to the other side. So negative 3y equals negative 5x minus 6. And then divide by negative 3. So y is 5 thirds x plus 2. So 5 thirds is my m, 2 is my b. b of 2 means I'm going to begin at 2. And then my slope of 5 thirds, I'm going to count up 5, write 3. And there's my line-ish. So B for begin, M for move. Begin at 2, move up 5, write 3. 33, doing the same thing but with an equality, so we really have to watch our sign here. We have a negative 3Y is less than negative X plus 15. Divide by a negative 3. Because I am dividing by a negative, I have to flip my sign. So I have 1 third x minus 5. So remember to flip that sign when you divide by a negative. So I will begin at negative 5 and then move up 1 right 3, up 1 right 3, up 1 right 3 a couple times. My line is going to be dashed because there is no line under the inequality. And then y is everything greater than negative 5. Greater than negative 5 is above negative 5 on the y-axis. Anything bigger than negative 5, so like 10, is bigger than negative 5. Remember, this is my solution set. So if I'm given points, I would plot those points and see which one point is in my shaded area. 34 to find the area of a square. A square has the same sides. To find area, we multiply. To multiply a times 3 by a times 3, we use the box and fill in. So a times a is a squared. a times negative 3 is negative 3a. Negative 3 times a is negative 3a. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. All in all, I have a squared minus 6a's plus 9. Thirty-five to find the area of a rectangle with these sides, we multiply. So two m squared n to the negative five times three m four n negative six p three. I multiply big numbers, so two times three is six. Add the little ones, so m to the two plus four is six. N to the negative five plus negative six is negative eleven and P stays as it is. I have to get rid of the negative, so the N needs to go on the bottom. But M6P3 over N to the 11 is my answer.